What is up, y'all? Welcome to this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. In today's episode, we have a very special guest. He is a dear friend of mine, and in fact, one of the reasons that I even started on this path. When I was in the dark night of my soul, I needed men, good men, heart-centered men around me to keep me accountable, to keep me disciplined, and this was one of those men. His name is Ethan Schindler, and he owns a fitness facility in Bastrop, Texas, and he's a dear friend, and in this episode, we unpack the need and necessity for coaches, for strong men to be around you, to have the support net so that you can be the best version of yourself. And as always, it is one thing to listen to a podcast. It is a whole other thing to execute. If you want to surround yourself with other elite men dedicated to serving a purpose greater than themselves and living life on their terms, if you want the discipline and the accountability you need to show up every single day, then be sure to check out our website or click the link in the description. And as always, enjoy this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. Let's go. What is up, beautiful humans? This is Dr. Dave Cahotis. I am on a mission to forge strong, heart-centered, and purpose-driven men. This podcast is here to help you stop managing your problems and start breaking free of stress, limiting beliefs, and excuses that stop you from executing at your fullest potential, living with passion, and being the man you want to be. Let's go. Ethan, brother, my man, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Such an honor to have you on. I wanted to dive in with you, uh, just kind of a quick backstory about how you and I met. I'll let you tell the story from your perspective. Yeah. Well, such a special moment. You and I seem to have uh, similar energies and we, we travel in similar circles. So I had actually heard about you before I'd ever met you from friends. And then one day I get, you reached out to me and it was kind of like a, uh, I, I was selling some equipment. You were looking oh, at yes, yeah. the very mm-hmm. first time we met, I was selling some equipment and it was like, man, I love this guy. And, um, and then that was kind of like a short lived, um, interaction. The equipment didn't work out for you or whatever, yeah. but it was like, obviously there was a connection there. And then, um, sometime later, I don't remember the exact amount of time you reached out again because we had some similar friends and you were, you were interested in getting a group of men together to um, support each other. You know, we were all businessmen and we were all working on similar things, helping other people. And, and you were the ringleader. You organized this all. And it was this awesome group. And we held each other accountable. We called each other on our bullshit. We agreed to meet regularly. And, yeah. and our brotherhood grew from there. And it's been uh, just growing and growing ever since. I love that. And that's obviously why we even got to this point. Uh, even doing these podcasts, because, you know, I really felt that there is a conversation to be had, especially for men in today's day and age, men's health. There's a certain, uh, you know, kind of conversation around men and patriarchy and toxic masculinity on this planet right now. And I think for so many of us as men, we're good humans. We are good humans and we have good intentions but we still suffer. We still struggle. And that was my, you know, my genesis of why I reached out to you and, and uh, this other guy named Dave, who was uh, part of this, the kind of the original group of us that got together. We just would go out for coffee. And it was, it was so palpable. I remember that because I knew I needed you. And I share this in my story a lot is I was a lone wolf. And I think so many guys are out there as well. It's I was a lone wolf and I really felt that I needed a group of guys to hold me accountable. It was something that that I had in the military and I know you were in the military. That's actually why I reached out to you and this other guy Dave is because of your military background. I knew you guys had good values, good beliefs and I wanted to be around that kind of energy to push me to keep me accountable, to challenge me. And obviously it it grew and it grew and it grew. So let me ask you this. When, when I asked you, what was the first thing that went through your mind? When you asked me which? Like to, to be a part of this like kind of accountability group. Uh, I'm taking myself back there. Um, I think in the, you know, honestly, it was a, a real 
curiosity. I think it's mm. like, well, what is this about? And what's his intention? And yeah. like, but also I remember feeling like I've always really wanted mentorship. You know, mm. I've always wanted some people to help guide me. You know, I'm out there, I'm wanting to do big things. I'm ambitious. Yeah. And, and yet I know that I don't know everything and I know that I need help. And I, I do remember the, the feeling of like, wow, this could, that, this might be that missing piece, that mm. thing that I know that I've been missing. Yeah that I haven't been able to find yet. And honestly, I hadn't been very courageous in seeking. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a vulnerable and humbling position to kind of go out and find your mentors or go out and find your community. And so it kind of came to me and I'm so glad you were more courageous than I was at the time. And, and I remember just feeling like, yeah, this feels right. So let's dive into that. Why, like, why was it, and obviously it is vulnerable to go out and seek your, your own mentors or your own coaches. And I think that, like, that's really important because I, I had that as well. What do you think that is? Like, where do you think that comes from? I can say for me, I was just coming out of a period. Um, I spent a long part of my life trying to put myself on the center stage, trying mm. to make everything about me. Even the way I, I, the genesis of my business at mm. the time was so that I could make myself all important mm. and look at what I know yep. and, and look you know, what I can give you. And it was all about me and me and, and very self-centered. And I was kind of just coming out of that and feeling a little lost and, yeah. and eating some humble pie in that I had had this persona prior to that. I was taking off my armor, I guess, if you will. And I, it felt a little raw and a yeah. little vulnerable. And I was trying new skills and new uh, ways of being that were very foreign to me at the time, mm. you know? And so that was scary. Yeah. We're, um, you know, you had mentioned that you were, you were kind of all about you and, you know, was there a moment for you that you like almost noticed it that you like kind of caught yourself? Well, I, not a moment. Um, there were, there were multiple moments where, mm. um, I would crash and burn a lot. Mm. Um, I would, I would struggle with depression with massive amounts of frustration and, and sometimes anxiety and, yeah. sleeplessness and uh, sleeplessness and it was it was they were some I knew they were symptoms of like something's not right I didn't know what yeah I wasn't doing correct because I felt like man I'm a I'm out here I'm I've got this business I've got all these clients and I've, I'm making money and and I and I just had I, in fact uh, my gym at the time had just been like rated the best gym in Austin yeah. at that time and so I was like what could possibly be wrong yeah and then things started happening like I would be depressed or whatever but I just kind of realized that I had made every single thing, every relationship, the business, like I needed to be the center of it. Mm. And, and it all, re I purposely built it all to rely on me. And there would be things like, you know, I couldn't get my classes at the gym covered because I had no help. I had, yes. I was it. I was a one man show. Yes. I was everything, you know? And, and th then, so eventually there was multiple situations like that, that where I was like, I'm the problem. I, I realized it. Yeah. And I, well, a couple of things. I think it's super courageous of you to like even witness like, fuck, I'm the problem. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it's so common too, because I had that exact same experience when I was going through my dark night. And even, even to like now, it's like, there's this, this want for control, right? It's like, and for me, it wasn't as much significance as it was perfectionism, but in the same sense that kind of shows up in significance, right? If I had to like get honest with myself here. It's a sense of like, well, I can go, I can go fast. I can go, fa I can get it done now. Yep. But if I hand off this work, then I got to teach this person. Then I got to do this. Then I got to do this, you know, and I don't know if it's going to get done right. And if it doesn't get done right, then it's like, ah, you know, and so, but I'd be, for me personally, I'd be scared shitless if I got a bad review on, yeah. on Yelp or Google. I don't like, that was my thing. That was like, then I would be a bad person, right? Like yeah. I would just like really hold on to that. And I do remember I got a couple people. It's the irony of that. Like when you are afraid of something, it shows up on your doorstep. I got a couple text messages from some clients that I wasn't, you know, I, they, they just wanted their receipts, you know, for, for services. That's all they wanted. You know, such a, such a simple thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and so I like, I just, for whatever reason, I was trying to do all the things and I, I, for, I forgot to get the receipts of services. And they were like, and this one gal was, cause she worked for a lawyer and she, I remember this, like she sent me this text and it was like this legal text. And I'm like, I turned white. I remember that like, Oh, like that was one of those moments of like, 
ah, fuck, like I'm the problem. I'm the one in the way. I need, I need to change now. Yeah, I cannot do all of this. Yes. I can't do all this. Yes. And yeah, yeah, I remember that feeling. And, and what you said a minute ago was massive to me too. Like the review, like how people spoke about me. Yep. Like not even, okay, wait, like no, how people would speak about my business. Yes. I would take as if they were speaking about me, my yeah. whole, entire identity, <laughs> my entire person, yes. everything was wrapped up in you know, my job and my, my, how people saw me. And it's such a, a, such a common thing for men and especially businessmen and ambitious businessmen to, to have your identity wrapped up in either your net worth or in your business of like what it looks like. And I know so many guys that are kind of the same way. It's like they're, they want to expand. They want to go to the next level. They want to, they want to succeed or get the results but they get in their own way. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that fear, like I said, is going to show up at your doorstep one way or another. And in kind of let, you know, let's, let's kind of go back to uh, coaching and, and kind of knowing, did you know that, that you needed a coach? And then did you know that like what kind of coach that you needed, or you just knew you needed some type of mentorship? Um, I knew I needed somebody who more than just like, yeah, they, they would have to be very pretty diverse, like more yeah. than just business yep. more than just, you know, any one area, because, you know, what I think I, I realized and what I wanted the most, I wanted, I wanted to grow as a person, mm. not just a, a businessman or a, a strength coach or anything like that. I, I wanted yep. to grow as a human being. Yeah. And, and that takes, I think, a special kind of person. And, and to answer the other question you asked is like, I went through a period of examination of like, well, looking back at my life and trying to like identify periods where I felt like I was really doing well. And when I was kind of like feeling great about what was going on with me. And in almost all of those scenarios, I had leadership or mentorship. You know, mm -hmm. when I was playing sports, either in high school or in college, yeah. um, I had coaches who were helping me and, and guiding me and holding me accountable and encouraging me when the, when the time was. And then when I was in the military, I, you know, you had your, your leadership, you had yes. your team leader, your squad yep. leader, your platoon sergeant, whoever it was overseeing my process and, and, and guiding me along the way. And so those were the times when I kind of felt the most in fire in life. And then I had yeah. gone out, like you said, a lone wolf yeah. and I didn't have any of that anymore. Cause I thought, Oh, I, I've got this all figured out. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've had enough. And, and to touch on that, it, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one of my, my greatest coaches was my wrestling coach in high school. And I remember just like, just the, the value that he brought to my, my world, you know, I was, you know, wrestling, it's like a, a very like masculine, let's, you know, go butt heads. But he just had this calm presence about him, you know, and he would just like, he would, during a, a match, he'd just rub my shoulders and he'd breathe. Like we would just breathe. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's just like, he's calming me down. And then some, for some other guys, he knew how to pep him up. And so that value of having a coach, I do remember that that was so powerful and kind of the same thing, you know, throughout, throughout college and, and throughout the military, you know, it's having somebody there. So let's, let's kind of break this down, actually. I think this is a great, a great direction to go in this because, you know, this is such a, a unique time in our, in our society because coaches are starting to pop up everywhere, yeah. right? There's so many coaches out there. What, you know, what qualities when you're looking for a coach? or even a mentor, what qualities do you look for? And then we'll, we'll kind of also add in, you know, what, like, how do you, how can you call someone's bullshit? Like when you know, there's a guy that you and I, we went to uh, one of his seminars and he was good. And I did sign up for his coaching program, but there's, there was something about him that I'll, I'll share a little bit later that was just like, didn't sit well with me. And I want to name names because that's not, that's not fair. Yeah. But I don't even remember his name. I remember the, the yeah, being, the, I don't even remember this guys. Uh, but I did do his coaching program and it did help. It did, it did help. Well, let me just, let me just, I'll just say it. When I did this coaching program and whether this is good or bad, it was very in the boundaries. It was like very clear. And he didn't like, if, if I asked uh, like a specific question, he would kind of come back to like just doing this. Like, so it's like, he didn't make it applicable to my world and my life. And he had a lot of people, so it was very hard to get access to his, you know, I guess his next step, like he, he would constantly kind of like add on the, the extra like, oh, we'll come to this next seminar and come to this next seminar. I'd be like, 
bro, I just, I just want the, I just want the answer to the question. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would be like one thing, but, but what makes a good coach? Let's, let's talk about that. What makes a good coach? I, I was actually thinking about this today. Number one, I think when you're talking about a coach, you're, you're really talking about, you know, a leader and you're, you're talking about somebody who also inherently in a coaching role or a leadership role, it's not about them. Mm-hmm. It's somebody who isn't so, so speaking of that individual, I think I knew pretty quick uh, because he spoke about himself a lot yes. about his own accolades and like how much money he made and yes. all these other things. And I think that that makes, we all get to choose and we all, you know, there's, everybody has value, you know, everybody Absolutely. has something they can teach me. So, and I did learn something from him. So yeah. I, you know, I'm not taking anything He's, away from that. He has great value to teach. Absolutely. I'll give him that. But for me, what I feel like uh, great coaches, what they know is that it's not about them and it's really um, about the the other person. And so, and then they also have, to me, that they have to have a skill set in understanding, you know, the, all the different obstacles that might block somebody from success. So they, they kind of have to have either been around the block themselves a little bit, fallen on their face, stumbled, helped many other people in that same scenario, or um, have been very like studied and kind of diverse in diverse ways of working with different people, you know, because the human condition varies for, you know, for a lot of us. So yeah. I think, I think those are important characteristics. Yeah. And I, I would, I would second that I've noticed with coaches that I've had, either they're, they're academic, right? There's like, there's almost like, yeah, like two types, mm-hmm. if you will. There's, there's the academic that is the PhD. They have all the knowledge. They are this analyst, essentially. Like sure. they're like, they're going the technician, deep, the technician, right? They're going mm-hmm. deep into the into the nuances of the subject that you might be learning from. And then there's ultimately like the guy that just got his face smashed in like a thousand times and learned a way that works. The artist. That, yeah. And, and I think they both add value. I like to think that I'm sort of like a, a hybrid, you yeah. know, when I, when I work with people and it's a combination of I've had traumas. I've, I've had many, many a trauma mm-hmm. in my life. You know, we've, we've shared a story. I've, I've been to war. Uh, such like as as well as you and um, traumas from my life, uh, from my childhood, f- uh, from my adulthood. Um, I think one of the traumas that we don't talk about in society is financial trauma. I think that's a real, real thing. Of course. And uh, I experienced it, and I didn't know which way was up. And <laughs> just my head was spinning one day um, after just like everything kind of collapsed. And I remember that, like, and so with that knowledge it's not that i'm a you know financial coach now but it's like i have the knowledge and the wisdom of a what does it feel like to be broke as shit for an extended period of time to not know where you're going to make your next dollar from to be afraid but also to how to reconcile with those emotions how to how to move through that experience how to how to you know get your feet on the ground and just take one step one step one step so you know when i'm coaching guys Nowadays, it's really around the subject of how are we articulating and how are we perceiving the world around us? Because that's such a huge component. It's mindset. Because if you can see, like, you know, not just from the view that you have, but from the view that everyone else has around you, then you have a new perspective. And now you can take a new approach or you can get into your rational mind rather than being in your, in your subconscious mind where you fall. You're, it's like you're the victim of of your own training or, you know, in the military, we, there was a term that we, um, you fall to the level of your training when you're in battle. Absolutely. You know, and I think, I think training, training is so powerful, so powerful. And so that's, that's something that's super important. You know, obviously when I'm, when I'm looking at for myself, both coaching, but also receiving coaching is, you know, cause there's a nuance of the subject matter and then how do I become a better person in it? Like you were mentioning, uh, which actually is a really good question. You know, and, and this is sort of a, a very subjective question, but what does it mean to be a better person, right? We, I, think, I think men want to do that, but what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, what does it mean to be a better person? I think um, I think about, yeah, very subjective because I think everybody would give you a different answer yeah. to that. But I think for me, what means being a better person is how I contribute to the world. How do I, what, you know, I think about, uh, I have a strong belief that, you know, we are here to elevate our, you know, so we focus on ourselves yeah. so that we can give it away. And the, mm. the more elevated I become as an individual, 
the more I have to offer to others. And elevated can mean a lot of different things. It can, like you mentioned, it can be uh, academics or or intellect. It can mean it can be emotionally. Mm. It can be financially. There's a lot of different things. But as I level up, I think part of me being a better human being is finding a higher impact. Yeah, for, for others. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Actually, I think that's such a powerful way to to think about it because ultimately, it's not. Like we can't take our house and our cars and our toys to the grave. It's just what you give. And we're all just giving, we're all basically just giving to ourselves ultimately. You know, when you elevate yourself, you would then give the, give that to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. When that's in stressful times, when I, cause I tend to, I remember this sometimes, like when I'm talking to people about it, but a lot of times I'm living my life and not remembering it. And Mm. that's, but when I, when I do remember it and when I'm really stressed, stressed out, I, I try to remember like, Oh, I've got all these work to this do, and I got to do this for these other people, and I've got all these other people, I've got all these obligations to other people. Yeah. And then I try to remember, like, oh, no, 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 wait, hold on. This is for me, too. You know, for me to, you know, I'm giving to myself by giving to this other person, and it helps me ease the stress of, of the whole thing. I, I really like that. So let's go into that. Like, what other practices do you have personally to just align your mind and body? for the day or, or when you're feeling that anxiety, feeling that stress, cause you've, you've come through that now, mm-hmm. you know, what do you do either on a day-to-day practice or, or how did you get to who you become today? It, uh, it's been a long process. I have refined for myself something like a, um, a daily practice that I try to start every day with to kind of get me going. And then I, there are things that I do if I catch myself in a spinning out or not being who I, you know, being my full self, there's some things I'll do throughout the day, but the the two things that I try to, or really the three things that I try to do every single morning at a minimum um, is uh, find myself in silence, uh, meditation, mm-hmm. and affirmation. Mm-hmm. So that I consider that one of the, the habits is kind mm-hmm. of just wake up, get myself up before I need to be anywhere and um, find silence, you know, breathe, find my breath and just be, in, you know, around me and I have different practices of that meditate or I'm learning how to how to meditate better the the other practice is um journaling is huge mm. for me I've and I, I stole it from somebody but I can't remember who but I have this very specific way that I like to uh journal I, I take a sheet of paper um at the top of it I write two to three things that I that are on my mind you know we always have that thing that's spinning in my in your head like I got to get this done yeah so I get I just have a place for that you know and I put it at the top of that piece mm. of paper Two to three. Th- now I might have twenty things I got to do that day. Yeah, but I I try to prioritize. What are the top? Like if if I got these two or three things done today, I'm a, I feel like I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, below that, I do a brain dump mm. of like literally every thought that comes to my mind unfiltered. I just write it. So if I um if I look down at my shoe and I I see my shoe, I write shoe. Um if and then if that reminds me that I need to do laundry, I write laundry. And then if I say, why am I even thinking about laundry? I write, why am I even thinking about laundry? And for about two to five minutes, I just unfiltered write everywhere. I don't think about grammar. I don't think about hand, uh, handwriting. I just dump it uh, on that piece of paper. I really like that. Yeah. And then below that, at the bottom of the piece of paper, I write a letter to myself every single day. Mm. Dear Ethan. And yeah. uh, the content of the letter is as if I were my own personal coach or my best friend, my mm-hmm. own best friend. Yeah. And um, and I just write something meaningful to myself. Uh, hey, I know you're dealing with this um, this problem with this relationship. I just want you to know that I can see that you're doing the best you can. I appreciate how you've been kind of handling that, and I know you're going to get through this, or you know something like that. I write myself a letter, and at the bottom of that letter, I always sign it. I love you, Ethan. I love that. And that's my journaling practice, which really, it, it has been, mad, it's simple, right? It's not complex. It's yeah. Not, it's just so simple and it just works so well for me that, uh, yeah. And then uh, the, third, the third practice um, every single day is I just try to learn one thing. I try to learn something. I listen to a podcast. I'll do an audio, audio book. I'll read a book or I'll research a topic or something. If growth yeah. is really important to me. Do you have a, a specific you know, I'll give you an example. When I'm learning, 
I'll, it'll be based on a subject that I want to bring to the world. You yeah. know, maybe, you know, maybe it's about spirituality. Maybe it's about podcasting. Maybe it's, a, you know, whatever. Yes. Do you have a, uh, a formula uh, for like, you know, to know where you want to, to go with your learning? Um, it, what you just said is I, 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 I kind of let it find me in yep. that. And then it's whatever yeah, I'm, I'm my, it, that's my, um, play time. Yeah. You know? So it's like whatever I feel creatively, whatever is drawing me, whatever's on my mind. Yeah. Um, I just kind of free flow it uh, and it, it, it comes to me, yeah. you know, most time or, you know, a lot of times I'm kind of working through something. So it's a period of learning something for, a, a, you know, weeks or yeah. something like that. So it kind of, until I get to a, a completion with it. Uh, I love that. And kind of going back to that, actually the, the brain dump and the journaling, because yeah. Ultimately, and, and this is what I've learned over the course of my many years as a clinician, just in practice and just, you know, in coaching, that the, the brain and the body are not good vessels to keep shit. You just don't oh. keep it in there. No. Right? It's like awful. Actually, a really bad <laughs> container. Exactly. It's a bad container. It's more of like a, a like sort of like a pass-through container, right? Even if you think about Conduit, food. yes. Yeah, conduit, like it's even food. You know, like we, it's like it goes in one way and out the other. Yep. Uh, breath goes in, goes out. And I think so many of us carry and we hold on to just like, oh, like I'm going to hold this for just years. And it could be an emotional trauma. It could be just like, a to-do list. It could be, I catch myself doing that sometimes of like kind of thinking about my, my life, you know, like what I'm going to, what I'm going to do with in this part of my, my career or in this area of my relationship, or, you know, I'm always like thinking about that stuff. And then I'm like, wait, like, what if I just like completely let go? Yeah. And I love that, that aspect of it where you just, you just completely like in a cathartic way, just completely brain dump what have you noticed since you started pra that practice? Do you notice that you feel like different? Yeah. Oh, lighter. Mm. My, my weight is, I mean, just I, it, infinitely less uh, throughout my day, almost to steal your term, unbreakable Yeah. in that uh, I, I don't get spun out. I mm. don't get angry. I, you know, I don't, you know, I, I have the, I have a normal, uh, range of emotions. I'll feel sad sometimes. Um, I'll get excited. I'll be elated, but I never am to anything. Like yeah. I don't ever like spin out in any one direction and I'm in any direction that I do spin into, it's always quickly recoverable. Mm. Um, and I really do think it's directly attributed to that, that journaling practice, uh, for me. Um, one thing that you said just a minute ago that like, really really hit me and i hadn't thought about it but right we're bad containers of yeah. anything but i think another way of saying that uh, another important piece of that is that it's going to come out somehow we cannot hold it yes we are incapable <laughs> yes and so now where do i want it to come out mm. and when do i want it to come out oh i've just <laughs> <laughs> so that you just blew my mind. That is that is so true in so many ways. Because if you hold on to something, and you don't even sometimes we don't even recognize we hold on to stuff. And again, I'm I'm kind of going back into the the somatic work that I that I use uh, in my facilitation, in my retreats, and and even in my practice. That if you don't release this energy from your body, it will literally break you down until you are diseased. Sometimes I say dis and eased like separate, but like you're going to manifest some type of disease because of this energy that you're holding on to. You don't even recognize it. Yeah. It's just patterns. It's it's pure epigenetics and we know that this is truth now. And so it'll come out. Yeah, it might it might come out in the form of cancer, which right. like sucks or psoriasis or something pain in your body pain in your body a yeah. mental health condition yeah i mean it is going to come out it's it's so crazy and to to touch on what you said that oh that is so good it's you have the choice like you're taking the locus of control you're taking response uh, and making it an a, an ability yeah so you are now responsible and you're you're deciding oh i'm going to put it into this cathartic expression and that cathartic expression could be journaling could be dance, could be somatic release breath work, which is I, which I teach. It could be conversation. Yeah. It could be running. It could be lifting weights. Uh, but to make the conscious choice, this is where I'm going to let it all out. I'm going to truly let it 
out. No, I mean, I'm not going to hold back. Yeah. That's powerful. And that's important too, that it's the choice. I am doing this thing yeah. to let this out mm -hmm. because we often use a lot of those. Oh, well, let me go back. I have often used many of those things as the opposite of that, as my escape from that thing. I don't Ooh. want to deal with this. Yeah. So I'm going to go running. Ooh. I don't want to deal with this. So I am going to play music or whatever it is. Yeah. Right? And the key characteristic of what you just said is I am choosing this canvas to let it out, to yes. deal with this, not to get away from it. So, so what's the difference there? Let's, let's dive into that. Cause I think that's a, you know, if we're going to talk about self coaching, yeah. Cause I think we're all self coaches. I think, I think all of us at the end of the day, like we hire coaches, right? Like you're a coach, I'm a coach and we hire these types of people. But ultimately the only one that's living with you is you like you're the only one in your head all the time. Well, to take that another step, I think the greatest coaches in the world do exactly what you just said. They help us to coach ourselves better. Mm. They make us more self-sufficient. Yes. The, the goal of my goal when I work with everyone is to work myself out of a job with them mm. to where they don't need, I've given them everything I can give them. Yeah. They do not need me for anything anymore. They are now able to do everything that I was able to give them. Someone else can give them something different. Yes. But, but it's important for them to be able to self coach. I, I love that. Yeah. So let's go back to that distinction when yep. you're, you're deciding, cause I think that's really important. You know, how does one know, are they escaping or are they truly letting out and, and using this practice, let's say running or lifting weights. Cause I know I lifted weights as a way to escape Yep. and I would overdo it all the time. I would constantly be injured constantly like getting it you know and like the irony as i was in rehab like that's you know my background is is physical physical therapy and chiropractic yeah and uh and so i you constantly injured yes and so i'd i'd be better chiropractor because of it but what what's the distinction there i i think it's it's there's an awareness piece there um mm -hmm. i think it's important that we all know that we're all at least thinking about like why am i doing this thing yeah and, and which is, again, I work in the world of helping people with their, uh, in a large part, it's with their physical capacities and their physical abilities. Yeah. And if they come to me and their, their whole goal is around the, that actual, like, you know, I'm doing this so that I can do this. Like, it's not about something else. There's no bigger why. There's no bigger explanation for it. So I think it's just really an awareness piece. It's, it's asking yourself why I'm doing this, if I don't have a good answer for why I'm going on that run or whatnot, that this kind of like a be so that it's so that I can do this other thing or so that I can process something. Yeah. Right? I just think so many of us honestly just walk through our lives completely unconscious, yes. completely asleep. We wake up, we, we go into a job, we punch the clock, we write our reports, we clock out, we go home and we don't ever just even think about why am I doing any of this? Yeah. So if that happens, you know, I think that's the distinction. I, I love that. I think that's so true because, you know, in, in what you were describing, when you started noticing like you were depressed, you were anxious, it's like you don't notice things until you start getting the symptoms of them, like right. anxiety, depression. I started having panic attacks. Yeah. And I was going through life thinking, yeah, like I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing, like going to the work and go and treating my wife with respect and raising children and making the monies and, and all these things, but I was fucking miserable. And it just, you know, I call it the great unraveling, you know, when you see it and you decide, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore. There is a great unraveling in your life. You lose, you know, you might lose the house, you might lose the relationship, you might lose the, the cars and the money and the business, but that's by design. So you can line up to the individual you were meant to be on this planet. Yeah. yeah thank God for those, uh, unraveling. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's how, you know, yeah, that, you know, I mean, nobody just finds themselves on the right track right off of the bat. Like, no, that doesn't, you know, no, you don't right. just, you have to fall on your face and it, you have to. And there's this interesting thing and, and it's such a funny pattern that I've seen with Essentially, everybody that I've ever talked to about the subject, which is we go through life as a child, sort of like, not laissez-faire, but in a sense, like kind of veiled. We, like, we think the world is a certain way. And then we get into adulthood 
And it's generally around when you become responsible for your own well-being, like you're no longer, you know, like no one, someone's not there to either give you what, you know, you think you need, things like food and money and shelter and these things. You become responsible for yourself. And then ultimately you become responsible for another. Uh, that's, a, that's a great fuel to the fire, whether it's a, a wife or, and children, whether it's a, it's a you know, subordinates in the office, it's, it's clients, it's something. Now all of a sudden you have a responsibility for the, the well-being of others. And so now I think this is a natural tendency too as men is that we, we carry that with absolute pride. Like, yeah, like I'm responsible. Like it's part of the, the, the psyche yeah. of kingship in, in masculinity. And when we go through the great unraveling, it's because we, we get to the point of like everything that you thought you like knew to get you to where you want to go doesn't work anymore. And you, <laughs> well, I, I mean, because I'm sitting here processing what you're saying, and I'm, this may or may not be true what I'm about to say, but I wonder, I can say for me, why did I unravel? Why did I keep falling flat on my face? Because I was so fucking self-centered. Yeah. I was making everything about me. I stopped. Be, well, why I'm here on this planet is to serve, is to contribute, is to give, yeah. is to help other people elevate. And I, I stopped doing that. I made mm. it, I was, I was just selfish. I just made it about me. Yes. And, and that's why I, I believe in, I know you and I have had conversations about this outside of this one, but why did I feel like I was on fire in the military, which at a very young age, I entered the military at 17 years old. Yeah. I became a leader at like 19 years old or something yeah. like that. But because of what you just said, which really clicked for me because it wasn't about me. Mm. I had my guys, I had a mission, I had yeah. other things. I, this was my rite of passage of learning how to be obligated to others and to be a part of something bigger than myself. Yes, yes. And, and so all these people who are suffering around us, people who come to us for coaching, they want coaching. A lot of times they're suffering because they want things to be about them. Yes. They're, they are only thinking about themselves and yes. they're being self-centered and they really need to just cut the shit out. I, I absolutely agree. Actually, I'm, I'm really glad you touched on that because I think going from an unconscious man to a conscious man, there is this bit of responsibility, but you still need the mission. You still need the, the, the reason greater than yourself, right? Yeah. And, and I, kind of the same thing. Like I had that in the military. Like I, I love freedom. Like I fucking love freedom and I think it's so important to fight for. And so I signed up for the United States military mm -hmm. for that reason, thinking that I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to make the world free, you know, yeah. realizing that there's, there's other, other agendas going on, but it's okay. Like we won't get into politics. Right yeah. Now. You became the, one of the least free people. On right. The planet. Yeah. Which is the irony. Uh, <laughs> but the point being is when we go through the, the process you know, we have to have a point on the map. We have to go towards something that's not, that's not us, that is out of service. And that's always, always the very first place that I start everybody yes. is like, what are we, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. what is this like, in service? Of? Yeah. What is this in service of? Like, what the fuck are we doing here at all? Because it's, it's that. And it's, you know, if you do any, uh, you know, I, I'm a big Jungian analyst and I, I love Carl Jung and, and the way he breaks down the psyche and one of the main archetypes that he uses. And if you read Joseph Campbell, it's, it's, uh, he talks about a lot of um, different characters. And essentially, these characters are parts of us. You know, it's um, almost like the, the, I think the internal family systems like, yeah. talks about this a lot, is these different types of characters essentially in our brain or our psyche. I don't want to say in our brain because that's not the seat of uh, consciousness because that's a whole nother conversation. But these parts of our psyche have these characters and the king is the primary that must come online first in order for us as men or from, to go from boys to men in order for us to mat maturate. And if we don't come online with that or don't allow that energy to come online, which is the one that brings forward the mission, brings forward something greater than yourself, then we're just going to be, you know, wheeling and dealing like dick swinging little men, you know, mm -hmm. like we're little boys really in, in these man suits thinking that we are men, but in reality, we are just boys running around, you know, just again, drinking and, and smoking, smoking and joking, as they say in, yeah. in the army, <laughs> you know, and, and so 
I love that you touched on that. You know, it's like, if I'm going to self coach myself, right. You know, like that would be the very first thing that I would do. It's like, okay, well, what am I in service to there? There needs to be a mission greater than myself. Yeah. And let's dive into that. Like, how do you know if, if you're in mission so, to something greater than yourself, how do you know it's right? You know, how do you know you're like aligned to something like, you know, whether you want to save the whales or whether you, you know, say the rainforest or for me, it was work with men. Like, how did you know what, what the right service was? It's a great question. And I think about this a lot because I do the same thing. Like I really won't work with anybody until they've claimed a purpose. Yeah. Like that's step number one. And if they can't get there, then we're just going to stay there or we're not going to work together because, and so I think about that a lot. And I'm a big believer that none of us were like um, predestined. I believe that none of us were like predestined a-, a purpose in life. You weren't assigned one at birth or anything like that. Yeah, I really get. I um, I believe that I am who I say I am. You know, and um, and so it depends on what I say about myself. Uh, you know. Yes. And so you kind of just get to claim your purpose. Yeah. And my personal purpose has changed many times in my life, and I won't. I can't ever say that none of them were right. I can't yeah. say that they weren't right. Yeah. Uh, they just didn't stick yeah. I, or I went to something else, but it, it doesn't mean that it wasn't right. And so I have a hard time answering that question because yeah. I guess that what I would say is if there is a such thing as a right one, it's the one that you stay consistent with for the most, the longest period of time or for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, it's right because it doesn't fade off or wear, wear away. Yeah. And, and the way I, I feel about it, it's like what sets you on fire. Yeah. And I think, I think we all know right? Like internally, like, um, when I'm public speaking, I just, I love it. Yeah. Right. Especially about, about personal development, about, about mindset, about, you know, just being your best self, uh, how, how to show up as a leader. There are certain subjects that I just personally gravitate towards. I love entrepreneurship. I think entrepreneurship is powerful. I think we need great entrepreneurs and I love working with entrepreneurs. I think we need great men. That's why I even want to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I really enjoy health. I think health is such a vital component. And so, and I love leadership. And I think if we have these, these aspects of life, you know, dialed in, and I think we're, we're all going to live, we're all going to live good lives. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with you a lot. And I, and so when I'm um, helping people to find their purpose or I help them create like a purpose statement. Yeah. And part of it is that I have them introduce themselves as that purpose statement. And so when mm. you, so when you say, uh, when you're on fire, you like, when, when you say like, this is what I'm about, it has to feel good. Yeah. It has to feel like it's a sense of pride. It's, there shouldn't be any shame. Like if you say what your purpose is, somebody and you're kind of, you're a little shy about it yeah. you know, you're kind of like embarrassed to even say it. Yeah. That's not your purpose. Yeah. You're, when you say it, like I know mine, I have a three part purpose. I'm about optimal health, deep human connection, and self-actualization. When I say that shit, I'm like, hell yeah, that's what I'm about. I love that. You know, and so I think that's part of it is you're on fire for that. Yeah. And I do remember, and I I just want to like throw this out there too, for anybody that's like considering their, like stepping into their purpose, because I think this is really important, is when you truly identify what you feel like is your calling on this planet, this is really, this is really vital because I don't think anybody talks about this. There will be people who love you that will try to stop you because they're afraid that you are either off the rails, like you're completely despondent, like you, like you're not even on this planet anymore. And and sometimes it's you know the people closest to you. Uh, I'll give you an example when when I you know I was I was running a practice, a you know a physical therapy chiropractic practice, and we were doing fine, but I was so unfulfilled in that feeling aspect, right? We can talk about like kind of where that feeling comes from. I have a certain take on it. But when I was in that experience, that expression, I was so unfulfilled and I I was so misaligned to something of value that when I found men's work, that's when I was like, this is it. And I came home and I I was so excited. I was so excited. And I remember she literally cried when I was like, I'm going to be a men's coach. She literally cried. And I was like, I was like, no, don't do it. Like, I was like, and so it it took me from that day I kind of claimed that. It took me until uh, fairly recently, I'll be honest. It took me until fairly recently to actually step into that that identity. Yeah. And I had to 
unidentify with who I was in order to truly identify with who I now am, which is a men's health expert, knowing that I am, I have embodied that because I've gone through the ropes. I know what that feels like. But all the, all the long, you know, I was also learning lessons and I could have, I definitely could have like helped somebody back five years ago, but it's completely different than it is today. Yeah. I think those setbacks and those tests are purposely there. Uh, I recently, for the first time, surprisingly read The Alchemist and, and such a good book, such a great book and won't go off on a tangent about why I hadn't read it sooner. But one of the things in there was kind of like the, those, you know, when you're on your journey to find your personal dream, yes, those tests are going to come in your way. Those, those relationships are going to struggle not to deter you from it, but to prepare you for mm. those happen for you yes. to have those conversations, to deal with those problems so that when you get to the dream, when you do the yes. ultimate, your personal dream, you have, you are, you know, tested by fire. Yes. Yes. I actually, I have, it's been a while. It's been like five or six years since I read The Alchemist and what a great reminder mm -hmm. of that. And I think that's even in thinking about those conversations with my wife in you know, I'm able to hold a, a space for her now to express herself fully without getting mixed into the emotion of it. So if she's having an emotional kind of outburst, whether she's crying or she's yelling or she's angry, and even if it's directed to me, I can recognize that's her pattern. And I used to think if she was angry at me, I'm like, fuck you, you know, like I would get super defensive and deflective and such, you know, like that is the absolute easiest pattern to fall into. It's like, we go into our inner child and we're like, we think that the the woman we love is going to run away from us. And so we get into this defensive, like inner child posture and we get very deflective. That wasn't me, you know, and that's it. And, and in reality, it's like, oh, now, like because of those conversations, I can hold that space, hold that masculine energy, be present in love and just be and she can go through her her movement and just like rattle against the edges of that that container and then it softens and it softens and it softens and then all of a sudden it's like oh you were just feeling unstable and and me taking a decision that you just didn't have all the information of oh i see now like, yeah yeah and it's like that um when you have to fight for something like when you have to kind of stand your ground on something it all it's another sign that this is for me because if you let it go so easily if you're yeah. like you know what I mean? But like the, the arguments that I've had to people thought I was crazy when I was going to go from one career to, to starting a gym. Yeah. And I kind of had to fight for that, you know, and and um, and that's how, you know, you're on the, the path because yeah. if you want to fight for it. Yeah. You want to stand up for it and you want to learn how to articulate why this is important for you to other people. That's yes. how you know that you're, yeah, I'm on, this is, this is maybe my thing. Yeah. If it, if it rubs somebody just wrong a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be a lot, but I, I totally agree. So let's, let's talk about when you are going through the, the process of, again, we were talking about coaching yourself and you're thinking about, you know, like what, what's the next best step? So you got, you know, let's say you have your purpose. How do you know? You know, like, how do you know where to go at that point if you're going to coach yourself? Um, I think after you have your purpose, there's a couple other things. Well, one, obviously, that having the, the mission, having the purpose yeah. gets you about 80% of the way there. Yeah. Like, if you're clear on that, you kind of already, you have somewhat of a map to yeah. follow. Yeah. Um, so, so then it's kind of like just doing the thing, uh, engaging. You know, that gives you your um, decision tree about, what do you engage in and what do you, you know, then I think it's um, beginning to get to the essentials of your life. So anything that isn't in line with that purpose, yeah. you're going to have to start learning how to, to shed yourself yes. of that. So I think that's kind of like the next step. Yeah. Like you, you re like I did, I found myself doing a lot of things that turned out to not be a part of my, my purpose. Yeah. And I had to kind of let those things go and have some hard conversations or just stop doing them. Yeah. You know? So that's not always easy, but I think that's part of it. Things that have, have made it easier on me is to, you know, in the military, it was like your, uh, it was like your, your tax op or whatever is your SOPs, yeah. right? Like this is my, these are the things that I do and this is how I do it. And this is like, when that doesn't work, this is what you do. Yes. And so I kind of started to create my own little 
handbook, you know, I call it my, my purpose dashboard is yeah. what I call it. And yeah. so like when you're driving your car, uh, I know I'm going somewhere. I've got my mission. I know where my destination is. I'm driving my car, but my vehicle still has to get me there. So I need to make sure that I'm checking my gas and that I'm not going over the speed limit and that, you know, all the, that stuff. And yeah. so I think there's a process of kind of refining your, you know, sharpening your sword and making sure you've got all your tools in place and all that good stuff to fulfill that purpose. I like that a lot because I actually use standard operating procedures as well. And it's something, I mean, you, you know, we learn about it in the military and it's such a powerful thing to learn. And I don't think enough people utilize SOPs in everyday life. Yeah. I literally created an SOP for my kids for when they get out of bed so that they knew what to do to get ready for school. Yeah. Cause step what they, one, yeah. step two, what they would do is they would get up, they would go to the, you know, go to the TV, they would turn on the <laughs> TV, they would grab some cereal, eat it out of the box. Right. Like, and there would be cereal all, they just smashed into the couch and I'll be like, God, what are you guys doing? Right. And so like, and I'm thinking, wait, I'm responsible for these kids. They don't know any better. They just like, we're all kids. They just want to eat cereal and watch cartoons. I was like, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to create a standard operating procedure. And I will literally lay out. And this is, I literally coach people this way too. This is it's so awesome. funny. Cause like we're yeah. all, we're all inner children. That's all we are. It, it's literally like, you know, bed is made like, and you got to write it in a, in a proactive way, in a positive yeah like affirmative way because it's not like make bed like no i, I don't want to i don't want to make my bed like there's like this inner battle that we have but i can look at a at a, a statement and say bed is made it's emotionless it's just yes or no black or white one or zero and i can say yes that is correct bed is made or bed is not made and if it's not made i can do the work and the how they get there is up to them like that's but the standard is bed is made. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's funny because this goes right back to what you said earlier. This is the, so stylistically with coaching, there's, yeah. there are the technicians Yeah, and then there's the, and, and so, you know, and, and that's, and that's it. Like, this is like your, this is how you coach people because yeah. you like that tech, you're the academic and yeah. you're the, you're yeah. the technician and yeah. it's beautiful. And that work that I, I don't typically coach people like that. And that's because that's not like what is intuitive to yeah. me, yeah. but it still works. It, it, it works for, totally. you know, and we're all ultimately, we're all like coaching what we've learned from the past too. Yeah. you know, what works for us and what might work for somebody else. Yeah. And there is an art too in, in, in my coaching where I'll, uh, I'll guide people through the emotions of it. Cause that's mm -hmm. an art. That's yeah. like, a you can't get tactical with with emotions it's i mean you can have a process for it but ultimately you got to be able to to really have the nuance of going in and through and and around you know when to push when to pull back uh, of somebody's uh somebody's you know emotions yeah so let's kind of dive in um then we'll kind of we'll dive into the negative side of coaching and and what to look for mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of we'll kind of break it down from there because we we've, we've been having a really good conversation so if you're about to hire a coach Mm -hmm. and you just get a weird vibe or you know you know you're looking for something what's what's a negative virtue of a coach that you you just like doesn't jive with you well like you said i think it's it's um sometimes hard to put your finger on but you know yeah you know and it's like with all relationships yeah. you know with all people that you meet it's like so, you know, and you know, maybe not all, you don't like it's like like a hard like definitely i, I do not want to work with this person but yeah. you'll kind of like Anthony DeMello's book, Awareness, uh, really helped me with something around this. It's like, you, like we have a hard time describing what love is. Like mm. you can't, it, it's not easy to articulate what love is. Yeah. You know what it is not. Yeah. Like we, we have a hard time describing what, what God is. Yes. But we know what God is not. Right. And I think it's easier to, so then go into the coaching question. Yeah. Maybe it's hard to define what your perfect coach is, you know, or what, you, and because everybody's going to have a different, you know, someone's perfect coach. It might not be my perfect coach, yeah. you know, but I know what it is not. Yeah. And, and I think you really look for those things. There's just something that's not setting right with yeah. you. Yeah. And, and to touch on that too, and I, I really like what you said there. I've noticed that even if a coach doesn't jive with me, you know, kind of through and through, kind of like with everything, 
I still learn a lot from every coach I've ever been with. Yeah, no every what. human being has value. Absolutely. Every human being yes. has something to teach me. Yes. So certainly there's, and I have had, I have hired coaches for me before who in the beginning, I wasn't really feeling it. Yeah. And now I look back, I'm like, man, I'm so glad I had that coach. I've, I learned yes. so many things from that. Absolutely. Person. Yeah. Cause then you can even learn like, well, if I was a coach, I wouldn't do that or I wouldn't treat my yeah. client that way or whatever it's it's you know so much value no matter what and i think ultimately I, you know if we're going to kind of distill this conversation down into one thing it's like there was there's really a few things that where you and i have a lot of similarity in our own personal expression and 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 genesis evolution is that we we surrounded ourselves with with like-minded men mm-hmm. and or like-minded individuals doesn't matter who you are and we both got coaches we both got mentors and I think, I think that is kind of, you know, it's really a conversation I want to just bring to the world anyway, you know, it's, but I'm just happy that we even had it. Yeah, absolutely. I just, you know, it's like humbling yourself yeah. to, and purposely seeking out people to teach you things, to yes. guide you, yes. uh, to help you grow, yeah. um, admitting that you don't know everything. I think that's yeah. just part of the, the, the process. If somebody, if somebody was hesitant of hiring a coach, what would you tell that person? Ultimately, like, what would you possibly be hesitant about with hiring a coach? And usually a lot of people, it comes down to the money. Yeah. It comes down to the time. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have, and these are all superficial, you know, kind of like mean, like, I mean, like, cause you've really get down to the reason why would you not want a coach? Right. It's, well, you're scared. Yeah. If and you, I think there's fear, okay. there's fear in like being vulnerable, right? Yeah. You know, like I, I do agree with you. It's like, yeah, money, money and time are, are objectives. And I lay it out with people like any, when I first get on a call with them, a discovery call, it's like, you know, there's going to be an investment in this, you know, like we're here, like what, why are you even here? What do you need? And I think at least even getting to, to the doorstep, so many of us are afraid, like you were mentioning, like having the courage, we're afraid of um, being seen. We're afraid of, well, I've, yeah, I've been doing these things and I feel very shameful about it or guilty about it, but I need, you know, I need to, to talk to somebody about it. Yeah. I, I think it's even a, it's people are afraid to change. Yes. I am afraid to, I, I cannot even conceive being any other way. Yeah. That is terrifying for me. Yeah. Like going to Mars is scary for me because yeah. I've, I've never been to Mars before. Yeah. And so becoming someone else, yes. that's how people might feel is like, yeah, you know, really becoming raw and exposed and like yeah. having to do something that you've never done before is scary. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a big part, part yeah. of it. And I, you know, if somebody's listening and, and they're, they're thinking about hiring a coach, doesn't matter who it is. It's like, you're going to go through change. You're going to go through the great unraveling. It could be a small one. It could be a big one. Ultimately you have to change your perspectives, you have to change your physical habits in order to become the person you want to become. And that's, that's why we all hire coaches in the first place. It's like, we know we want to get a result in a certain area of life. Maybe it's just being a better man. Maybe it's in business. Maybe it's in relationships. It doesn't matter the subject. The point is you are going to change and you do have to go through that great unraveling and grieve your old self to death, right? Like your old self is going to die. You have to feel the sadness of that and and go through that grieving process that's one of the one of my coaches recently taught me i was like i never considered that grieving is actually part of an every every day every week process Mm -hmm. where hey if i want to become a better human i need to take my old identities and i need to bury them i need to just send them off down the river and i need to be sad about that and it's okay to be sad about that but fuck it let's go forward yeah, I think that's uh, the identity thing is a whole nother huge conver- conversation about yeah. it. But that's really what it comes down to is yeah. my, what if this person, uh, you know, I am so attached to, you know, my my identity of my job and my identity of the habits I am. I mean, I talked to a person recently like I I am the I'm the bossy one. That's my identity. Like this yeah. person was saying, like, I'm bossy. Yeah, like that's who I am. I'm afraid to be any other way, yes, you know, cause who, then who will I be? Right. You know, like, right. you know, and so, yeah. um, identity is, you know, people get attached to, uh, the, they don't realize that who they are is not how they're acting, yes. what they have, all those, that's not who you are. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. I love that. All right. So, uh, tell me about, uh, where people can find you and, and, you know, who do you work with and, 
mostly I love to bring people to all these things that we talked about today yeah. through first starting with the foundation of uh, most people come to me around their physical health. So yeah. with their nutrition, yeah. their strength and conditioning, things like that. Yeah. So uh, people can find me um, through uh, mostly through my gym, uh, uh, Strive Strength and Conditioning in uh, Bastrop, which is uh, mm. strivebastrop.com. Yep. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Ethan Schindler. Uh, my, my handle is Ethan Schindler, yeah. at Ethan Schindler. Those would be a good place to find me. I also have a podcast, so people can find me at Doing the Work Podcast. Yep. Um, all, all good places to get a hold of me. I've been on that podcast. Yeah, there's a real good-looking guy on there <laughs> right around episode 10 or so. <laughs> Something around episode 10. <laughs> Go to that one. We dive deep into health. That was a good one. That's amazing. Yeah. And we're for sure going to have you on again. I, l- I loved this conversation. Uh, the next time we're going to talk about, we're going to go deep into your inner child. Ooh. And uh, that's going to be a good one. That's good because I've actually, I can articulate a lot of that when I probably wouldn't have been able to uh, a few years ago. So. I know. And I, I wasn't going to throw you into the fire today because, you know, like we, we've shared a lot of, a lot of inner conversations. And so we'll, we'll to be continued. Yeah. We'll, we'll have that conversation. Let's do it. Beautiful. All right, brother. For for anybody that's looking for Ethan, again, reach out to him on Instagram, Ethan Schindler. If you guys want, do you do online coaching? I do. Oh, uh, if you guys want online coaching, check him out. Yeah, I'll have you a know. link tree in my bio there on Instagram. And okay, you'll be able to kind of check all that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check him out. And uh, as always, I love you, sir. I love you. Thank Man, you for having me. This is amazing. I love you guys, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Let's go. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. If you found this episode valuable, then go ahead and leave a five-star review explaining how this podcast has helped you so more people can find it. If you want to be a part of the Brotherhood, then click the link in the description below. You can also check out the Unbreakable Man experience if you're ready to face a deeper challenge and change your life for the better in just three days. All right, guys. Thanks again for listening. I appreciate you. And as always, stay unbreakable. Unbreakable.